This is Messiah Nagawa, brought to you by Council for Global Evangelization, CGE. Welcome to our in-depth table talk. Nothing is off the table. Welcome back. We're talking to you from Melbourne, Australia, where the our base of Council for Global Evangelization is. So we've been speaking about Australia, but in particular Melbourne, our city, uh, where our ministry began and where God sent a lot of power and anointing that began to provoke demonic spirits, demonic influences. And, and then we come up against the high priestess in Melbourne, where they communicate without a telephone, where they challenged the power of the spirit in us where I was confronted mm. until I thought maybe the anointing is not enough because this woman was possessed, was well, spiritualist, really, she was. Mm. She began to taunt me and, and my friend Rod, who was with me, Shannon's husband, saying, where is your power? Your power is cut off. And then by God's help, I began to, to the Holy Spirit said, the voice of heaven said, speak in tongues and don't cease. And when I start to go off in some dialect, then I heard a voice say, call out high priestess. That moment, we got to know what was in her. And, and But at that point, I was wondering, is it enough to be even have the power and anointing? If the, the, the power station can be cut off and the Holy Spirit is not enough. Yes. And of course, we realize, you know, once you start to hear the Holy Spirit speak to you and direct you how to deal with things, then yes, the Holy Spirit is enough. The power of God is enough. We can handle these things. But as we said in the last uh, few episodes, we said it's like a lab. Melbourne's like a lab. It's a yeah. place of, it's an experiment where we got, God began to teach us as we move with that anointing and power to show us what is in secular society. Mm -hmm. Because we went into the public space, into the public square, uh, which as in the last few segments, we've called it the, we said Elon Musk speaks about the, the town square yes for many years we called it the public square how do you take the gospel take the anointing and the power of god into secular society not just in church not just worship actually in challenging the yes. sphere of secularism yes speaking about jesus openly with our shame we're not ashamed of the gospel of christ yeah. it's the power of god unto salvation for everyone that believe to the jew first and also to the greek so we have to confront the jew and the greek yes. you've got to get into the greek Get into the, the, the that place where this the civilization is, where the mm -hmm. culture is, and in that space, it's a different ball game we discovered. Yes. But at the same time, that anointing is equal to the task, and of course, God is training us, equipping us. And so, the last time we were talking about in this lab and this experiment, in this experience of Melbourne, what is this spiritualism? Why does a, a woman who says because I asked her, I said. Because when I called out high priestess afterwards, when she's moving up and down on the on the ground like a snake, like like a big serpent, I said, "Why was high priestess?" She said, "That was my rank. That is me, and that's my rank." We communicate without a telephone, and you get a different perspective of what is your city, what is Western society, what is secular society. We're so so much cocooned in church on a Sunday morning. We don't know what happens in our cities. Yeah. We do not know the powers that are in the underground of our cities. We don't know the spiritual forces that are involved until that anointing comes in, yes. until you start to get into the public square and you start talking about Jesus open and then media gets involved. They came after us. Yeah. They want to know who we were. In the last episode, we're talking about the 1870 as a very important um, yeah. milestone. It's, it's a mark, marking point, if you like. 1870, we discovered in our research that what we're encountering in our city actually began in 1870. Um, by 1900, we have Australia become federation, but the, 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 the powers we call spiritualism was actually based in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. This is the, almost the epicenter mm -hmm. in the English speaking world, if you like. This is where, um, I mean, we know that 1870 happens here, but we, we found out in our research that Melbourne the people were involved in Melbourne, in the University of Melbourne, and the politicians were inspired by America. Mm. Same year, 1870, something was going on in the United States, in New York. Yeah. So New York influenced Melbourne. Yeah. And we come in years later with that anointing and power, we're finding the place is entrenched. Yes. Demon powers have been entrenched, they're operating in culture. Yeah. 1870 in New York, 1870 in Australia. But in Australia, 1870 uh, in Melbourne, our state is known as Victoria. The big city is Melbourne. Mm -hmm. So 1870, they formed Victoria, Victorian Association of Progressive Spiritualists, 1870. That was set up by a man called W.H. Terry, who edited 
uh, the journal of this association, Progressive Spiritualists. This is based in Melbourne. In Melbourne. Mm -hmm. um, the journal is called The Happinger of Light. Some say Happinger, but we say Happinger of Light. This is the beginning of what in recent years people assumed was the New Age movement. Mm -hmm. You know, rainbow this, rainbow that. Mm -hmm. um, organic foods and, and um, the, you know, abracadabra of this and that. Yeah. But the thing was very highly organized. It was based in the University of Melbourne, academics. It says in my research here that at first drawn to the movement were queens and prime ministers, clergymen, doctors, fashionable society, really. And uh, the man Deacon, who became prime minister in during this period, he entered parliament, a bigger pardon, he entered politics 1879. He entered politics 1879. 1880, he entered parliament in Victoria. 1883, he became a cabinet minister. And I read here that with his election to the Victorian parliament in 1880, then he was appointed to ministerial office 1883. He becomes busy now with politics, but he did not give up the spiritualism. He was still interested in the occult phenomena. For him, it never vanished. He was still uh, from time to time attending seances until 1890s. This is the man who was second prime minister of Australia at Federation. Yeah. You've got Button, prime minister Button, who was a spiritualist, progressive spiritualist. You've got Deacon. We've got a university in Melbourne known as Deacon University. So Deacon, his name is Alfred, Alfred Deacon, second prime minister of Australia with two terms of office. So we talk about the foundations. We talk about founding fathers of Australia mm -hmm. at Federation 1901. So uh, this is these are the roots of our, our. You would think it's secular culture, but actually, according to Calbert, according to Tilch and Calbert, by 18, 1917, 18, 19, end of first world, they discovered that Western culture has become demonized, has become demonically distorted. And in fact, he, they said that uh, it becomes empty and then finally it falls for a time under demonic control. It These did, two. There was a little bit inside that, though, wasn't there? Something about the culture? Well, Calbert and other theologians, Tillich, Calbert, they believed that society is autonomous. Secular society wants autonomy. Mm. Secular society does not want church crossing over into politics into the secular space, church uh, church and state, we must understand the difference between church and state. They must never be brought together. Yeah. Theonomy says we want the rule of God. Yeah. We want Christ to reign in his kingdom on earth. We want to get involved in politics. We want to get involved in society. That is how to change society. Mm -hmm. But by end of First World War, these two great theologians decided, they concluded that society has become demonized. Mm -hmm. And what we need is to deal with the demonization. Demon, the society has become demonically controlled. So they said it was, it was demonically distorted, and then something about the culture, uh, and then the culture. When when um, a demonically distorted cultural system mm -hmm. has set in, yes, that's it. Yeah. That society has become demonically. It's come under demonic control. Mm -hmm. They said the spiritual spaces of, of, of secular culture have become demonized. Mm. So to push the word of theonomy, which is the rule of God, the Ten Commandments, pray in schools, yeah, yeah. to push this moral um, yeah, doctrine. Ruling and reigning on the earth. Ru ruling and reigning, which yes. today now has morphed into the Seven Mountains yeah. and this whole new awakening in America about how to be involved in secular society, to be in politics, to be involved in business, dominion. dominion um, all that, according to Calbert, Tillich, Paul Tillich Calbert, these two eminent theologians already discovered by end of First World War that up until then, they did not know what the problem was. They want to help society. How do you, you know, is it, do we accept autonomy of secularism or do we invade secularism and put our stamp on it, bring the rule of God in it, which is theonomy? Yeah. So there's a clash of two ideologies here, theonomy and autonomy. As we have come to, to discover in the last uh, several decades, Western society is, is, is absolutely asserted the autonomy of secularism. But we persist in theonomy. We persist in the seven mountain. We're still trying to find ways to... Christianize. Christianize <laughs> culture. <laughs> Christianize culture, yeah. But Jesus never sent us to Christianize culture. Never did. 
Actually, yeah. John on the island of Patmos, he said in the book of Revelation, in one of his epistles, that the whole world lies in wickedness. Yes. Antichrist is already here, little children. Yeah, yeah. We were never sent to convert secularism. We were sent to convert people who are lost. We were sent to bring the light and the gospel of God. Yes. That's what Paul calls it. Paul never, ever tried to change secular culture. No. He never, uh, when he debated with the Picans and the Stoics, he, he wasn't trying to change culture. He spoke about, they call him a set of forth of go strange gods, because he was talking about Christ. So uh, we find that the Western culture, in Western culture, the church still wants to transform society. Yeah. So we use words like transformation. In the modern language of the church, you hear words like transformation, trans transformative, instead of conversion, instead of proclaiming Christ, instead of... Yes. Um, of, of uh, regeneration. We don't hear words like regeneration straight from the Bible. We don't hear about uh, people turning from darkness to light anymore. We don't hear that gospel, the one Billy Graham preached, the one, you know, a number of people have preached that gospel. Yeah, yeah. But we think that's not enough. Yeah, yeah. We think we have to help. We have, we have to help God with our logic and our step-by-step -step process of what it takes to be a Christian, all the right prayers, all the right... We want to be the salt in of the earth the soul. we we have re reinterpreted scripture for ourselves yeah. to be sold in the earth means let salt just go in just permeate society and change it from within that is not preaching the gospel that is theonomy yeah <laughs> pushing the ten commandments pushing praying schools it's actually but it's 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 um it's what christians do when we're trying to exert our own influence Right, as in, um, we're trying to help the outcome. We're trying to do things active and be good Christians in the earth, that type of thing. But we're not in the gospel, like Jesus model. Yeah. We're in the helping to change society change or society. helping to influence other people. But we're the the Christ, um, the Christ and the cross, the Christ and the cross. That that. That is this transforming power. That's the, you know, the... The power of God and salvation. Yeah. Christ, the power of God. Christ, the wisdom of God. Christ, the power of God. Yeah. Couldn't be more clear. But we're talking about our city, Melbourne, 1870. 1870, they're called Victorian Association of Progressive Spiritualists. The word progressive, I've always believed progressive, some political movement. But today, I will... If we take you back to 1870 in America, where the inspiration comes from, to a man called A.J. Davis, Andrew Jackson Davis, 1870. The man is the inspiration for Deacon, Alfred Deacon in Melbourne, in Australia. So 1870 in America, 1870 in Australia. Those two, the same year in two different parts of Western Christian civilization. Yeah. Something is going on in the two places. But... The same year, 1870, in Australia, we've acquired something that's come from America. Same year, 1870. In 1870, there was a man in America called Andrew Jackson Davis. Andrew Jackson Davis is in New York. He's born in New York, I think, in a place called Bloom, Bloomington Grove. That's the name. Those who know New York would know. And he was not educated much. He, but this, the, when you Google his name, he, he's, he's known as an American spiritualist. Now, this man... In 1843, I attended a lecture somewhere. In this lecture, he heard about animal magnetism. Mm -hmm. That word animal magnetism is the power of spiritualism. Mm -hmm. And 1843, 1844, the following year, he began to hear voices speak to him on how he should organize a progressive spiritualist lyceum. The word lyceum in French, we say lycée, which is like college, like institute, education, if you like. So we talk about education. I don't know if you understand, but education is so, so important. Today, they say, you know, the political left, extreme left or radical left is so much in the universities. We're looking at the, 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 the harvest of a seed that was sown back in 1870. So the word lyceum is actually ancient Greece. Ancient Greek, from ancient Greek, the word is Lycaon. Lycaon is the temple dedicated to Ap Apollo, the wolf god, like the wolves. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about the wolves, the, 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 the wolves here. 
-hmm. So Christians, um, born again people, you are sheep and you're being eaten up by the wolves. Without, without, without knowing it. Without knowing. Secular society has been taken over. Yeah. Because we think it's just political. We think it's just, you know, it's come out in the last few years. We don't realise that there is a historical thing at work. We think we're dealing with socialism. Yes. Or in the politics. Some politics. You know, it's, yeah. a pol it's a socialism. It's the political left. It's radical left. And the yeah. conservatives who have the Christian values and so on are perplexed. And, you know, we have the free market economy, we have, you know, the market forces and everything else. We wonder why they don't listen to us. Mm. They rolled out an education system in 1870. Mm. Education system from, from children, from kindergarten. They call them Lyceum. Lyceum isn't just kindergarten. It is the, the, you know, education from a baby, from a child until they mature. And they go through several levels. So the, the idea is progress. That's the key word. Mm -hmm. Progress today is now called progressives, progressivism. But the, the actual word is progress. Mm -hmm. It's morphed into a, a whole political and it's called progressive. They're progressives. But before, they were actually uh, progressive spiritualists. So they've shed off the word spiritualist. So the word is progressive. But in the beginning, the word is progress. What is progress in that spiritualist space? Progress means a child is an angel. A child is innocent. We're not tracing, you know, the word depravity, depravity from, from the fall of man. That is not part of spiritualism. That's for the church, the Orthodox religion, Orthodox Christianity. So the idea was that the man Andrew Jackson Davis said, we must destroy. The idea was we, we, wish, we wish to, the word was not destroyed. We wish to dismantle, basically, dismantle this theology that's what he called it this theology the theology of sunday school that is you know this the fall of adam like sin. no 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 what church teaches on this what you call sunday school the okay. churches have sunday school today we all know yeah uh, most most believers in christ have heard about sunday school many have already come through sunday school yeah. uh, as children and and uh, but in 1870 they said sunday school mm -hmm. the orthodox christian sunday school is evil mm -hmm. And it must be destroyed. They said, we wish to break asunder this theology. Exact words. Shocking. Exact words of uh, Andrew Jackson Davis in New York. Mm -hmm. We wish to break asunder this theology. It's evil. Yeah. A child, you know, a child doesn't come from Adam and Eve. There is no depravity. There is no fall of man. Every a human being is from a baby, innocent. All they need is to roll them through progress. The word progress means um, nurture them, uh, improve. improve, so improvement, growth, graduation. By the time they get to 50, the age of 15, they're ready to become the disciples who go into all the world. Yeah. By the time they get to become 21, Deacon, the man, Alfred Deacon, at 21, he was in parliament. He was a lawyer already. Mm -hmm. They already work out the age groups and the phases of growth, this improvement, growth graduation they want to change society permeate society infiltrate society through education education is big uh, conservatives are not so big on education mm -hmm. where we most in the united states in particular most top universities yale princeton name them all they're all christian they're all christian universities in, in origin 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 yeah they were set up by Christian people. Yeah. Orthodox Christianity yeah. started all education. They're the ones who started it. But today, no, all hijacked, taken over <laughs> by the progressives. Yeah. But they began with Elysium. So by the time they, they get to the age of 20, 21, they're in Yale, they're in Princeton. Mm -hmm. But at Elysium, at the lowest level, they began as spiritual, mm -hmm. progressive spiritualists. Yes. They call them. They call themselves progressive spiritualist friends. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get to 21 and beyond, you are ready to take your place in society. You become lawyers, doctors, mm -hmm. so that then you're ready for government, mm -hmm. for influence. Call it the seven mountains on the side of the progressives. Yeah. That's their seven mountains. Yeah. Basically, they've, 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 they've taken over. Uh, the word was that uh, what Andrew Jackson uh, said, Jackson Davis said, we must bring dominion 
the child, by the time they get to 21, they'll have dominion over the earth, dominion over events, dominion over circumstances, exact words. Yeah. So how do we get here? So in Melbourne, we discover by 1870, this idea of the Lyceum has been adopted by Deacon. Mm. But what is this um, animal magnetism? Mm. Animal magnetism is called a proto-scientific um, theory developed by a man called Mesmer, a German doctor from the 1800s, from, from the 19th 17th. century, 1700s. A German doctor, Franz Mesmer, where we get the word mesmerize. Yeah. Franz Mesmer taught in his proto-scientific theory that every living thing, humans, animals, vegetables, I read the word vegetables, I could not believe it because mm -hmm. I thought to myself, wow, that is witchcraft in Africa. They used vegetables. Yeah. I used to wonder, how do they use, how do witches in witchcraft in Africa work with vegetables? Yeah. You know, they, they'll mix the portions and you go from vegetables. Yeah. But Franz Mesmer believed that every living thing, including vegetables, especially the animals, mm. So human beings, animals, anything living is infused with force of nature. There is force and powers innate in nature. Um, so uh, we're talking about harnessing nature. Which, which, which biblically is God, God's right? God's work. Because God, Genesis 1, right? Genesis 2, God speaks and things are created from him, of him. All things created are of him. So they're trying to hijack that. The power yeah. of God. Yes. We're going, when God spoke the word, the universe rolled out, the heavens and the earth. You should get to know the word firmament. Yeah. I mean, I love the word firmament. When I used to teach from Genesis 1, we found that the word firmament is... is um, it speaks about the waters above the firmament, waters under the firmament. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, until now, until you find that it's actually it's possible. There's water on Mars. There's water here up in the, in the astronomy now tells us about these things. But the firmament speaks about God creating the earth. Yeah. There's the sound of the hammer. There is the spreading of the sheets, like creating something substantial, yeah. Yeah. Uh, material. Uh, and so the word is rakia in Hebrew, and it's actually the act of creating, the act of fashioning the earth. And by speaking and the light moves out, everything rolls out and comes into being. But now, whether it's stones, whether it's mountains, whether it's planets, they use now this idea mm -hmm. that there's living power in nature. Mm -hmm. How can we harness that? Yeah. But that belongs to God. It doesn't belong to... So Satan still believes he's the God of this world. He does. The prince of the power of the air. He is God. God isn't God. He is God yeah. up until now. Yeah, yeah. Well, we know not... From the cross, no, that's he's, right. He's been finished, cast out, absolutely, absolutely cast out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's no, you know, the God of this world, yeah. Prince of the of the air, no, and but he still believes he's God. He still believes, and the Bible says he has blinded the minds of those who do not believe. So we have a, a human life, society, humanity is under the grip of darkness. It's the blinding of not being able to see. And to understand God. By the way, the word, it says that what Satan has done in the, the word is, is tuflos. It's, the, it's a darkness that's come in vision in the eyes. That people cannot see the remarkable God, it says in the, in the Greek. Yeah. Remarkable God, how remarkable he is, who he is. Yeah. So that blindness, so that the humanity cannot know God, cannot see him, yeah. cannot get a vision of who is God. Yes. So and that's why the gospel is so important. The gospel, yeah. Um, so we talk about 1870, but... Um, so what is, what is this animal um, magnetism? So Mesmer, Franz Mesmer is from the 18th century, 1700s. And I found in my research that around 1790s, William Pitt, the prime minister of England, there was a William Pitt, the younger William Pitt, the elder was his father. He was the youngest prime minister, William Pitt, 1890s, a British prime minister. 1790s. 1790s, I beg your pardon, 1790s. And he was, uh, he began to change the politics of, of Great Britain. He, he called himself um, a new Tory, the Tories. Uh, let me give you, explain something here. English politics, whether it's England or Australia, I don't know much about the United States, because you got, a, you got, we've got a Labour Party in England, we've got a Labour Party in Australia. In America, you have the Democrats. But let's talk about the Labour Party in England, Labour Party in Australia. Uh, if they really want to go after you, they call you a Tory. 
the word Tory is conservatives. They call them liberals in Australia. They call conservatives in America. You call them conservatives. Republicans, you're Tories. A Tory talks about the free market, market forces. Very abstract. You just assume that people just understand what you're trying to say. But what William Pitt did was to make himself a new Tory. New Tory created New Britain. New Tory meant he's more on the side of progressives. He called himself an independent Whig. The Whigs are the forefathers of the labor movement. Mm -hmm. They are the opposite of the Tories. Tories, when you want to put that label on somebody, then you make society hate them, mm -hmm. and then they lose the election. Uh, but they call him, so there's a man called uh, Samuel Coleridge, uh, Samuel, Samuel uh, Taylor Coleridge, who people know him as a poet. Uh, he, some of you would know about the, the rhyme of the ancient mariner, mm -hmm. that is the man. But as an intellectual, as a poet, he said something about William Pitt at the time. He called him uh, the great political animal magnetist. 1790s. What he's saying, they were saying at the time that William Pitt is getting the influence from France it's during the French Revolution. So we're talking about the days of King George III, 1790s. King George III, we we're talking about the American Revolution. That's the same time when the Americans want to get rid of King George III. Uh, so you've got William Pitt in Great Britain. This is the man who goes Whig. He becomes more progressive. He becomes to starve off the revolution in France. It doesn't come to Britain. So the Christian people love to say that John Wesley um, saved England from revolution. Well, the truth is, it was William Pitt. Yeah. William Pitt, by going Whig, by going more, uh, more Democrat, more Labour, more yeah. um, new Tory. <laughs> So um, maybe that is the, the problem. If, if the Republicans want to win again, you might have to become new Republican. <laughs> you might have to identify yourself with the working class again. But then, well, I'm not going to wade into the American politics, but this is what goes on. Um, so you, you sort of bend more towards progressive. Um, so, uh, but what's happening in, in Melbourne is the Lyceum has taken root, 1870, uh, so by, by 1900, by 19, 1883, Deacon has become a cabinet minister, and then he becomes prime minister not, after, not long after that. So we're talking about the foundations, the founding fathers here. Yeah. So in America, if you go back to the revolution, American Revolution, get rid of John, uh, uh, get rid of George III, basically, so we're speaking about 1843, when Andrew Jackson Davis hears a lecture. The lecture was about animal magnetism. So it's, it doesn't begin in 1870. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 1843, 1844. Around 18, uh, eight, 1848, Karl Marx become, puts out the, the, com, the Communist Manifesto. We, we can go into the communism and, and, and show you also the, the spiritualism involved in, in, in communism. Mm -hmm. um, and we would have to talk about um, the man who becomes a Pope Pius XII. He was mm -hmm. Papal Nuncio in Berlin just before the Hitler took power. And or after, after that, he becomes the Pope. Um, but he was interested in understanding communism as taking Europe, that's affecting France, affecting Italy. And, and they were trying to understand who is Karl Marx. What are the roots? And the roots were satanic. They were spiritualism. Yeah. So the anarchism that we see now, the violence we see now, uh, the crime that we see everywhere, we are looking at the, the fruits. The fruits of that. The fruits of a spiritualist, a demonized, demonically um, distorted cultural system uh, and what is the answer? What is the answer? And we shall be talking about um, as a ministry, as, as a council for global evangelization here in Melbourne, how we were able to go beyond, how we're able to find the answer, the actual answer. We, we, up until now, we're talking about the anointing. We talk about the Holy Spirit. We talk about, yes. but the answer is in proclamation. But we shall give you the story yeah. in the next episode, how we found out exactly. that that is the key. Yes. It's the key to your city. Yeah. It is the key to your, to your uh, effectiveness as Christian people, as churches, as, as church movements. Yeah. You certainly need that anointing. Yeah. You need that power. Yes. But you will have to learn something new. Yes. It's called the proclamation. It is not for nothing that Billy Graham went the way he went. Yes. Yes. And we're going to influence you into evangelism, but we shall give you the context. Why? Yes. Why evangelism? Yeah. I, I think 
you know, we, we need to be able to help people understand that while it is absolutely imperative that we understand the Bible, we are in prayer, we have all the weapons of war of, of the Christian, right? Weapons of righteousness to the left F hand and right hand. Right. We have that, but we cannot be ignorant of the the bigger picture also like in mm. all of those things and being informed and understanding things god is able to use us um use all that in us to be able to be active in the nations and be part of the proclamation so we're talking about research we've read a lot of books we've, we've read the bible yes but we've we've tried to understand so much just remember paul saying to titus to bring the books bring the, books. Bring the parchments yeah that man Paul was reading all the time. Yeah, was reading all the time, and, and uh, so we need to be enlightened as Christian people. Yes, let's not give any more territory to Satan. Let's get to the weapons, and we're going to be talking about proclamation. Yeah, how in our city, this place we call the lab and the experiment, how we went from a river of healing power, anointing, demons crying out, to something even more magnificent. Yeah, yeah, something absolutely potent. Oh. Yes. That is about to change not just Africa but and Asia, but change Western society. Absolutely. Thank you for being with us on Messianic Hour, sharing our dreams and learning together. To be part of this global community, please visit our website at councilforglobalevangelization.com and subscribe.